Sharon, are you in your room? Oh, home already, are we? What do you mean, I always come home at this time? Look, Sharon, I don't really want to tell you over and over, but can you really not do anything about this sofa in the living room? Huh? What is it, Mrs. Brown? You were eating cookies while on the sofa, weren't you? There are crumbs everywhere. Can't you at least clean up your own mess? <sighs> Things like that should be taken care of by the people who are bothered by it. What? I didn't find it messy at all. You're the one who found it messy, so shouldn't you be the one to clean it up, mother? Just because I'm your son's wife and agree to live with you doesn't mean I'm responsible for everything around the house. So stop asking me to do everything, will you? Agree to live with me? That's right. To be honest, I'm not really excited having to look after an old lady. But still I agreed to come and live here, so I think I deserve some appreciation. If you want me to help, you better treat me better. <laughs> That's how you saw this? I'm busy taking pictures for Instagram, so could you please go and clean the sofa, which was apparently so dirty. Go and make some dinner while you're at it, too. <laughs> You went out again, Beth? Honestly, I don't know where you go off to every day. But you really don't get tired of it, do you? What? But I... You're obviously in good shape if you can go off somewhere every day like that. There's really no excuse for you not to do the housework, right? Sharon, you've got to do some of the housework too, you know? What? We talked about this when you moved in. I have a job and have to go to work while you're a housewife. I'm not telling you to do everything, but you gotta pull your own weight if you're gonna live here. Aha, uh -huh. what is this job of yours you're talking about? What do you mean? I don't see how going out every day is a job. Hold on, please don't tell me that going to the casino every day to gamble is this job you're talking about. I'd hate it if my husband's mother was a gambling addict. Why you? Just what do you think I am exactly? Huh? Well, a lonely old widow who lost the husband supporting her, I guess? Of course, we couldn't just leave someone like that alone. Which is why my husband and I reluctantly agreed to move in and take care of you. I'll say this one more time. If you want me to take care of you after you retire, you better treat me with a bit more respect. How you treat me now will determine my attitude towards you later on. Understand? So that's how you saw this situation? I knew it. If you don't like it, you can always just leave, you know. Now that your husband is gone, the house is now our property. It seems that you've got even that wrong. Actually, could you just leave already? No matter how many times I tell you, you never improve. Not even a single apology. I just can't bear you anymore. Obviously, this means I won't be taking care of you anymore. I see. It seems the two of us just can't get along with each other. I'm not going to cause you any more trouble. Thanks for being so understanding. <laughs> just know that if you come crying later on begging for me to look after you once you're old and helpless, that I won't do a thing. That's never gonna happen, so don't worry. Really? Well, good luck on your own. <laughs> Mrs. Brown, I heard that you were almost kicked out of the house. Are you alright? Oh, hello, Amanda. You heard the news? Mm, I heard from Sharon. She's told me that she's put up with you and kicked you out. And that you might come and leech on us here instead. Well, well. I have no idea on what she means by leeching on us. Sharon's the one who should get out. Truly. What did her husband have to say about it? It doesn't matter whether it's his wife or not. This is going too far. He's been abroad on work for 10 days now. I plan on talking to him about this incident, but he won't be home for another two months or so. Well, it's the times, I guess. It's hard these days to just go in out of the country. Well, I did want to part with her. I guess I got my wish granted. 
Anyways, it seems that I need to find a new place to live. Um, Mrs. Brown? If you like, you can come here and live with us until you find a new place to live. Really? You see, I already talked about it with my husband and he said I should contact you and invite you to come and stay with us. I know you prefer to be on your own, but I thought that your current priority should be to get away from Sharon as soon as possible. I guess so. You seem to understand me much more than Sharon does, so I might just take on your offer and stay over there until I find a new place to live. <laughs> we'll be glad to have you. My, my. So, now you're going to your other son's family? I knew it! <laughs> You really had to find someone else to leave Chapa, now that I'm not there to help you, huh? It's just sad, really. <laughs> it seems you won't understand unless I spoon-feed it to you, so I'll explain it carefully. I'm only going to be staying at Charles' place until I find a new place to live. <laughs> what? <laughs> That's what you're saying now, but you plan on staying in the inn, aren't you? I mean, I guess it can't be helped. You're an old lady with no income of her own. Um, it seems that there's a big understanding here. I have a job, you know. Huh? I'm a manager at Ford, you know, the car manufacturer? There's a huge signboard near the station, so I'm pretty sure even you have heard of it. I've been working there ever since I graduated junior college. Really? Ford? So, where you were going every day was... I wasn't going out, I was going to work every day from Monday to Friday. Oh, so that's what that was. Did you really not notice anything even after living together for one month? I always thought that you were just off having fun somewhere. Didn't I tell you that I had a job when we talked about who would do what around the house? What? Really? Also, I already have a plan for when I retire, so no need to worry about me. I already saved up some money so as to not be a burden to my sons and their families. My sons already know about this. Is that so? Anyways, didn't you two only move in with me in the first place since the company house you rented had to be renewed? You two were supposed to move out once it was over, right? Uh, but I thought that we were going to be staying here, permanently. Jesus, you seem to have not understood a thing. I wonder what the conversation we had before you moved in was for. But... But that's why you were so aggressive towards me. You thought that I was the one who needed help? You really should be more careful about your behavior from now on, Sharon. Wait, does that mean... Mother! Why does it say that you sold the house? I understand that you already have your retirement planned out, but you can't just go and sell our property! This is a crime! You hear me? I'm telling the police! Wait! Don't tell me that this is how you planned on getting the money for your retirement. Sharon, honestly, I'm not even surprised anymore. <sighs> You've got it all wrong, again. That house is my property, not yours. What? What do you mean, your property? That house used to be my uncle's. He never had any children, so it was passed down to me, his nephew. That house has been my property ever since he passed. That's impossible! I have fond memories of that house, but ultimately I decided that it should be sold. Why not just give it to your eldest son instead of selling it off? Why'd you have to sell it? It's because I had decided that if there were any arguments concerning the house's ownership, I would sell it without any second thoughts. Weren't you the one who started it by kicking me out? But still... There's no point arguing anymore. The seal's already done. It's my fault? I heard that the renewal of the company house finishes this month. Whether you do or do not understand what I said, pack up and move out by the end of next month. Will you? Beth, why? What happened? Your son told me he wanted to divorce as soon as he got back. He even said that we're not going to be moving to the company house anymore. Ah, so that's how he handled it? What? What do you mean? I told my sons about the conversations we've been having ever since you moved in. You what? I'm not surprised, really. You don't listen to a word I say and seem to get everything wrong. On top of that, you talk down to his mother and treat her like some sort of maid. No wonder he wanted to get a divorce. 
How is it my fault? How was I supposed to know that you had a job and the house was yours? What do you mean, how was I supposed to know? I'm pretty sure I explained this to you quite clearly. Honestly, I'm amazed someone can just ignore what people say as well as you do. Either way, that attitude itself is enough reason for anyone to not want to bother you. My son has every reason to want a divorce. But that's so unfair! I don't want to get divorced! Even if I did want to help you, I'm afraid there's nothing I can do about it. Talk to your husband about it, will you? Goodbye, then. Wait! This is a big problem for me! My parents found out what happened and told me not to come home. I was an embarrassment, they said. But I'm a housewife and I can't make a living on my own, so... I know! Why don't you let me stay with you? You know, like one of those room chairs? I won't be able to pay rent, but this time I'll do the housework. It'll be a win-win situation. You've already found a new place to live, right? Tell me your address. <laughs> Why are these messages unread? According to my son, the house I left was a complete mess when he returned from abroad. Apparently, there were even cockroaches everywhere. He wanted to divorce as soon as he saw it. He said, Sharon resisted at first, but he managed to make it official a month later. Sharon began working at some company a relative of hers introduced her to and entered a dormitory for employees. But she was so lazy that they eventually had to fire her. I wonder if it's because she's never actually worked a day in her life. After that, she went to the Miami and tried leeching off of some rich man she met. But of course, that didn't go well either and was tried for stalking charges. What happened to her after that, I have no idea. Oh, where are you? I just woke up and you weren't at home. Where did you go? Why wouldn't you at least tell me you were going out? I guess you just texted your mom that you were going somewhere. I just got a call from her and she's really worried about you. Did you forget what day it is? We were supposed to tell everyone that we were getting divorced today. Oh my god, stop blowing up my phone already! You have got to move on, Scott. This can't keep happening. This divorce is going to be so much harder if you can't learn to just let me go. You have been stubborn and clingy for months now, and I am sick of it. That's not what this is about, and you know it. I haven't felt anything for you since I found out you were cheating on me. This is about you going back on your word. We made plans today to sit down with our families together. And now you've just disappeared without a single word? It wouldn't have been right for me to have the conversation with your family without you there. Why are you being so annoying about this? We talked about this, Hope. You said today was fine. You said that you wanted the divorce over with by the end of the year and I agreed. But the process takes time and it will only take longer if you don't cooperate. I know, but something came up. Gareth told me last night that he's taking me on a vacation. What? A vacation? To where? We're going to be alone together. Just the two of us for New Year's. Isn't it romantic? Seriously, do you really think that this is a good time for that? Maybe it's not ideal, but it's so hard to make travel plans at this time of year. But he did it at the last minute just to make me happy. And we'll even be staying at a five-star hotel. I couldn't exactly tell him no. I am so lucky to have met him. Money makes life so much better. Go ahead and start the divorce stuff without me. I'll be back after New Year's to help with anything else that can't be done until then. I don't understand you. How can you be so selfish? Did it never cross your mind that maybe the last month of being pregnant is not such a great time to go off on a vacation? You might have to go to the hospital at any time now. You are apparently going to be with this guy forever after we divorce, so there will be plenty of other New Year's for romantic getaways. Stop worrying so much. 
It's fine. I still have three weeks until the baby's due. Besides, I'll be with the baby's father, so it's not like there's any real problem. I think you're taking the dangers of childbirth too lightly. Too much stress on your body could send you into early labor. I seriously don't want a lecture on childbirth from some man that will never know what it's like to be pregnant. I know my body. Just leave me alone. Even as a man, I know that every woman's body is different and that not everything with pregnancy and childbirth goes as planned. What does it matter to you? It's not your kid, so it's not like it really concerns you. You just want to find things to complain about because you're not ready to let me go. It doesn't matter who the baby's biological father is. The kid hasn't done anything wrong, and I don't want something to happen to it. So yeah, I'm worried about what your decisions could mean. Oh, please. You're still in love with me, and so you're grasping at straws to keep me under your thumb. I've told you many times, that's not it at all. I have no feelings left for you, except maybe disgust. Well, it doesn't matter anyway. Gareth is my true love, and I know that we will be together forever. What happens to me is not any of your business anymore. Fine, I give up. When will you be back to talk to our families? I need a definite day from you this time before I schedule it. I'll get back from this vacation on January 2nd, so any time after that should be fine. Okay, hang on a second and I'll call everyone now and see if they're free. Hurry! This is supposed to be a romantic trip, not one where I talk to my soon-to-be ex-husband the whole time. Okay, it looks like everyone has some time on the 3rd. I'll see you then. I'll not contact you before that day, so make sure you remember. Also, I saw the divorce papers on the coffee table. We both signed them now, so I'll send them off if that's alright with you. Yeah, that's fine. I have to go. We're about to arrive at the hotel. Bye! Ugh, I hope this doesn't end badly. Scott, I need to tell you something. I'm not going to be able to make it on the third. It's just not going to be possible. Seriously? You're ditching on this already? It's still two days away. I've already asked everyone to reschedule once. I really need you to just be there this time. Please don't make trouble before we've even gotten to the day we agreed on. I can't help it. It's not my fault. What's not your fault? Well, the baby was born yesterday. Wait, really? You went into labor already? Yep, and childbirth was a breeze. I don't know what everyone complains so much about. I started getting contractions right after we got to the hotel. Gareth called an ambulance to come get me from our room. And then the baby was born a little bit after we made it to the hospital. Is the baby okay? Your mom told me that you went to a resort about an hour away from here. I told you it wasn't a good idea to go away so close to your due date. Oh my god, here you go again. Yes, the baby is fine. She's perfect. But you need to get it through your head that I'm not your wife anymore. And my daughter is not your child. You need to just forget that we ever existed and let us move on. You have no say in what happens in my life from now on. Okay, have it your way. When will you be back then? 
I know it takes a while to recover after having a baby, so I don't expect that you'll be home tomorrow. I'm really not sure when we'll get to head home. It could be a few weeks. Just go ahead and talk to everyone without me. Fine. What do you want me to do about it? I didn't choose to have the baby away from home. She wasn't supposed to be here for three more weeks. Postpartum recovery is really important, you know? It wouldn't be safe for me to come rushing back just to have a talk with family. And besides, all I want to do for right now is bask in this beautiful moment of having Garrett's baby. You should really be happy for me. I know it's probably hard for you to understand as a childless, divorced man, but you could at least try to have a positive attitude. I can't do this with you anymore. If you really want me to talk to our families without you, that's what I'll do. Thank you. I'm sure my parents will call me after you've talked to them, so I'll just talk to them myself when they call. I think this is for the best. It's too painful for me to see you in person anymore. Oh, that reminds me. I was going to ask you for one more thing. What is it? Would you be able to move out before we come back home? Move out? Technically, my father paid for that house. Now that we're getting divorced and I have a baby to take care of, it's only natural that I keep it. I've been dreaming of the day that Gareth and I get to live there with our baby as one happy little family. But that means you can't be there, so you need to find somewhere else to live. Don't worry, I never planned on staying there. I've already moved most of my things out of the house. Oh, okay, great. Well, I have to get some rest now. Talk to you later. Hi, Eileen. This is Scott. Sorry to bother you like this. Happy New Year, by the way. I hope your family enjoyed the holidays. Hi, Scott. It's lovely to hear from you. How are you doing? Have you talked to Hope recently? I hope she's enjoying her girls' trip. Yeah, I actually just got done talking to her. She actually had the baby yesterday evening. That's wonderful news. I can't wait to meet my grandchild. Are she and the baby okay? Yes, it sounds like they're both doing really well. She said the labor went smoothly. I warned her that she shouldn't go since she was so far along, but at least they are both healthy. That girl never listens. I actually have some other news about Hope. Well, actually about me and Hope. But first, I was wondering if it would be possible for you to go to the hospital where Hope is staying. Of course. Her father and I can head that way any time. I would love to see my grandbaby. I was wondering if you could do something for me while you're there. Sure, honey. What is it? I know this is a lot to ask, but I would like to get a DNA test to confirm if I'm the baby's father. I don't understand. Why do you want a DNA test? Hope has been seeing someone else for a while now and insists that the baby is his. We're in the middle of filing for divorce. But if at all possible, I would really like confirmation of who the baby's father is. I can't shake the feeling that it's my child no matter what she says, and I just want to make sure. Oh my goodness, I had no idea. I'm truly sorry to spring this on you in this way. 
But if it's mine, I want to do right by my daughter. Please, will you help me? If you don't want to get in the middle of it, I understand. If so, I'll go through legal channels to find confirmation. It's just been bothering me and I would like to know. Do you promise that this is just because you want to do what's right by the baby? I swear. And if it turns out that the baby is not mine, then I will never bother Hope again after we are divorced. Either way, I need to know because it would change how the attorneys handle the divorce. Again, I'm truly sorry to put this on your shoulders, but please, help me with this. I understand. I'll see what I can do. Thank you very much. I really appreciate it. What do you think you're doing, Scott? Answer the phone. We need to talk right now. What do you want? Why am I suddenly being told that my daughter is yours? Even though there's no way that's true and you know it. Ah, uh, I see. I take it you got the DNA test results? There's no way this is true. It has to be a fake test. No, it's the result of a legitimate test. Read the lab results for yourself if you don't believe me. It's not possible. Then you're welcome to do another test. That won't change the results, though. Oh? We didn't do anything to get pregnant around when she was conceived. What, you really don't remember? Don't remember what? When we had the dinner party for my birthday. I remember it because it was kind of a rare event for you to be so interested in being with me that way by that point. No, that can't be right. You're lying. I did my own calculations for when it was likely that you conceived and it adds up. I talked to your mom about helping me get a DNA sample from the baby's saliva to make sure. And well, you know the results already. That baby and I share DNA. That just can't be right. It can't. How could you do this to me? I was so happy. I thought me and Gareth and our baby were going to be together. Why would you ruin that? This is awful of you, Scott. Why couldn't you just let me live my life in happiness? What about it is awful? You didn't need to confirm anything with a DNA test. You could have just let us go our separate ways. When Gareth found out the baby wasn't his, we had a big fight and he left me. That's your problem. You shouldn't have let yourself live in a fantasy world without checking in with reality once in a while. I mean, try seeing it from his point of view. You had him convinced that the baby was his. Only to now find out that it wasn't at all, which proves that we were together while you were seeing him. It makes it look like you were using the pregnancy to try and trick him into marrying you. I would be mad too. It's not like that though. Now that the truth has been revealed though, we can only move forward. And on that note, I'm going to fight for custody of my daughter. No, you can't! You can't take my daughter from me! She's my daughter too. No, she is not. Not really. I don't care what some DNA test says. I'm her mother. The court would never give you custody of her over me. You have no chance of winning that fight. Sure I do. Think about it for a minute. You're a single mother with no income whose lover, who you're only attracted to for his money, just broke off the relationship. And your own parents aren't even on your side. They told me that they want you to think hard about what is best for the baby, or they would cut off ties with you. Did they really say that? They did ask them for yourself. 
On top of that, my office has a daycare center in the building I work in and is supportive of working parents. And they've recently implemented an optional remote work policy so I can be more flexible with my time at the office and at home. And I've already found a new apartment not too far away from where my parents live. My mom doesn't work but is certified in childcare, so if anything comes up and I can't be there, I know she'll be in good hands. So, to sum up, I am financially stable and have a solid support environment for raising a child. It may not be easy, but I think I have a solid chance of getting custody of my daughter. Scott, hold on a minute. What? Do you think maybe it would be simpler if we just got back together? Are you joking right now? It's just that I'm really impressed with everything you just said. I didn't realize you were so passionate about being a dad. It's making me remember why I fell in love with you. Wouldn't it be great for our daughter if she got to live with both her mother and father? We could be together again. Maybe even get remarried? No thanks. Why not? You have shown me plenty of times over the past year who you really are. And I'm not interested in being married to or raising a child with that person. So, thanks, but no thanks. No, wait. Just think it through. Anything you have to say after this can go through attorneys. I'm not interested in arguing with you anymore. Please, Scott! Goodbye, Hope. In the end, I got custody of my daughter without too many problems. When she didn't win custody of our daughter, Hope signed away all of her parental rights and disappeared. After she was discharged from the hospital, she went home to the house we used to live in together to live by herself. But her father put it up for sale not long after, and that a house sat vacant for a while. After it sold, Hope's father gave me a substantial amount of money to use to take care of our daughter in lieu of the child support Hope was not paying. It means a lot to me that they want to be in her life after everything that's happened. According to them, they don't have much contact with Hope anymore. I never wanted her to be left with nothing. She lost her home, her family, and her child. I do feel bad that she lost so much out of this. It wouldn't have been a problem with her visiting our daughter, but it was her choice to leave altogether when she lost custody. But in true Hope fashion, she made sure to cry her eyes out and make a scene in front of the whole neighborhood before she left. I haven't heard anything from her since then. 